The spiritual root system, roots of the human being, the roots of the heart. The human heart has five characteristics. We have hope, we have longings, we have desire, we have needs, and we have feelings. These are the five characteristics that are made to be placed into the water of relationship with others and God. You bring it, plant it into relationship with others and God, which we'll talk about how that's done over time. Hope is the inextinguishable, God-given inability to stop wishing for life to be like it's made to be. Okay? Now, I want to jump ahead just a little bit. When you hope for something, you're hoping for something you don't have. See, hope means you're wishing and, and forecasting into the future, looking into the future to get something you don't have. So the moment you hope, what do you feel when you're wishing for something you don't have? What? You're hopeful, and to be hopeful is anticipating your hands being full, but when you look at your hands, there's nothing in them. So I would like for us to consider that the moment you hope, you have fear. An anticipation of something coming, but also the recognition that it might not. Have any of you ever been disappointed in life? Have any of you ever wished for something and hoped for something that didn't come? Have you ever dreamed something that got smashed? Have you ever really thought that you were going to show up and X was going to happen, but Z happened to, uh, instead? Have you ever had a broken heart? Well, see, that's what hope, hope brings us to. We hope for something and it might not happen. The moment we hope, I'd like for us to consider you're wishing for something you don't have. And the moment we wish for something we don't have, we're often scared we won't get it because almost all of us have experience with not getting. All right, so hope is this inextinguishable hunger and wish to have life. Longings are uh, cravings for fulfillment. Uh, longings are a taste of, of complete and utter fulfillment in a human being that can't happen here. We long for justice. And we can create some of it, but have you noticed that no matter how much we create or how much we get, there's still more to be done, have you noticed? So we long for justice. We also long for home. If any of you ever saw the movie E.T., long time ago, extraterrestrial, E.T. was just pure heart. E.T. E said, I want to call phone home. I want to go home. And do you know who flocked to that movie? Grown-ups. Grown-ups. Grown-ups like crazy. And in the movie, little children, wounded people, people who had an ache inside of them, believed in and noticed E.T. They related to him. The scientists... Those people way up in their heads and didn't, didn't, sort of didn't have heart, just wanted to cut him up. And so E.T. would say, E.T., phone home. E.T., want to go home? And we flocked to it because we heard, I want to go home too. I want to go home. There's something in us that wants to go home. And I'm saying that we want to go back to where we came from, not, not aliens, uh, outer space people. I say we want to go back to the God who made us. We want to go home. And no matter how much we produce all the comforts that go around creating what we think of as home, even when the day is perfect, it's just not enough because it ends. You know, it's like your, your sweet little child, you can provide this sweet little birthday party that lasts all day long for your child. And at the end of the day, your child say, Daddy, Mama, it is a great day. It is a great, great day. Thank you so much. But if you're a grown up inside yourself, you know, and it's over. And the child knows it's over too. So the greatest experience will also leave us with a drop from that greatness into the sorrow of where we live. And it's like, well, Chip, you're kind of a negative type person. No, I'm not. I'm extraordinarily realistic. And I'm living truthfully in reality, which takes a lot of um, heart. Okay, so we long for home. We also long for safety. We long for a place we can go to where there's a person there big enough to put their arms around us and we can put our heads on their shoulder and we hear a voice that says, hey, it, it's okay now. You're done. You don't have to do any more. Something in us needs a rest that deep. And you notice no matter how safe you get, it's not ever safe enough 
because there's always that anticipation of something coming. I mean, how many of you have, it, it can be at, at the appropriate time. It could be, um, let's just say somebody knocks on your door at four o'clock in the afternoon. You don't go, oh boy, somebody's probably bringing me something. Most of us here knock on the door and go, uh-oh, uh, what's that? Somebody calls your phone. First thing you do is, what do they want? And said, I bet they want to call and tell me how much they love me. So we don't anticipate greatness and necessarily goodness. We also live in a world where a lot of goodness doesn't occur, sort of like at war. So we, we're, we're, we're very well reinforced to anticipate negative things happening, and they do. So we long for safety, a place we can go to where we can rest, and, and, we, and we also long for peace. A, a peace that is now truly without worry. And guys, it's not here. So longings are spiritual in nature. They're cravings within our very God-made makeup that cannot be fulfilled here on earth. So guys, if you're going to have cravings, if you have the courage to have longings, to fight for justice, to create as much safety as possible, to make as much home as you possibly can for yourself and others, and to live in as much sense of peace that passes understanding as is all possible, you're going to be in pain. Does that make sense? If you're a longing person and work towards creating everything that can be created here in a world that is at war with itself, you're going to be in pain. E.T. presented us pain. And people went to that movie and cried. And Steven Spielberg made millions and millions of dollars over tapping into our longings. Because we're just made like that. Do any of you relate to this, I want to go home? You know? And even when you get there, you're not there. So, oh, that's sad. That's lonely. That's hurtful. That's angering. You get it? That's scary. So we're already into the feelings. And if you don't have feelings, you can't do longings. If you don't have longings and let yourself long, then you're cut off from being a person who can be a sanctuary for people to show them how to live in a place that's really tough. Desire is your absolute inborn biological hunger for life. You want to live and you're going to, whatever it takes. That can turn into pure survival or that can turn into desiring everything that is pure, good, noble, right, just, lovely, admirable, praiseworthy. Heard of that? <laughs> Paul said, here it is. Desire, think on these things. Think on these things. Long for these things. Hope for these things and be at work about them. But you can't give what you don't have. You've got to be filled with something to pour something out. Okay? Now, needs. Needs, which we'll talk about at length tomorrow, a need is something you have to have fulfilled or you will die. Water. You got to have it. Now, it's crazy, but I had coaches that said, water makes you weak, which tells you how old I am because that they don't say that anymore. They're so smart now. <laughs> But the, the water doesn't make a person weak. Water makes a person strong. Okay? So, so a need is something you have to have fulfilled or you will die. Now, what's amazing is as emotional and spiritual creatures, the two most powerful needs in a human being is the need to belong and the need to matter. More powerful than the need for food, water, shelter, and clothing. Chip, seriously, that can't be right. I'm not saying that there's no biology in our lives that has power by any means. But what I'm saying, you look into the world of children and you watch a child that the Department of Human Services takes away from a mama or a daddy. Something in them is made to belong to mama, made to belong to daddy, to matter to mama and daddy. And this person has been abusing this child. Physically, sexually, biologically, starvation, not paying attention to him, abject neglect. But the heart of the child wants to stay with that person. They will cry to stay with the person who's harming them. 
not feeding them, burning them. Or they will dissociate so deeply that they become robotic. They go away so deeply inside themselves because they've been taken from the life that they're anticipating coming sooner or later. I have worked with so many people for so many years, and especially in the world of treatment, I have rarely heard, this it's rare, but I have rarely heard one of the men or women that I've worked with wish for another parent. I mean, I'm talking about some very significant abused people. They don't wish for new parents. They wish the parents they had had become who they were made to be. Do you relate to that? So in other words, that they would get heart and show up and become present and stay, that they would, they would be somebody you could belong to and matter to. So I want you to hear that as emotional and spiritual creatures, we really are, uh, that our needs really are emotionally and spiritually based. That doesn't mean that we don't need food, water, shelter, and clothing, and all that kind of stuff. Because if I don't eat after a certain point, I'm just irritable, and I don't feel like talking, and just leave me alone. I get that. But if also you say, you know what, I'm sick of you. I don't want to talk, talk to you. Like, you're so rude. I'm like, well, look, don't leave. Hold on a second. Let's talk. I just, and I will confess, I'm hungry. As soon as I eat, I'll be good. Because I really do want to belong with you. I really don't want to matter with you. And I want you to know that you matter too. So we say, I'll say I'm sorry. And then their feelings. Now, why have we been given eight feelings? And why have we been given what people have asked me for years, seven bad ones and one good one? You see them? You see anybody, hey, I can't wait to get up today and get hurt. I'm, I'm going for it today. I'm going to look for some hurt. I'm going to get hurt so badly. Oh, I can't wait to get up. I would be so sad today. It's going to be such a great day. So you look at these feelings and you will see almost everybody sees seven negative ones and one good one. But I want you to know that these are eight gifts, eight tools that we've been given to be able to live fully in a tragic place. Okay. If you look at the the extraordinary book of the Bible, the love letter from God from beginning to end. The first three chapters are pretty magnificent. Everything's like it's made to be. And then the last two chapters are magnificent. Everything's turned back to the way it was made to be. In between about 18 pages, in the front and the back, it's nothing but tragedy, suffering, difficulty, redemption, struggle, pain, loss, bloodletting, and God with us in it. God is with us in the midst of this tragedy. Life is tragic, and God is faithful. If you can't recognize life is tragic, then something's off with you. And life being tragic makes it pretty difficult to cling to God being faithful. Okay, And the way we maintain and the way we continue to live relationally with the faithful God is through a thing called struggle. By our struggle, we are reconciled. By our bringing our hearts to the surface and and crying out to God, speaking to God, telling the truth to God. By our confession, we are made known. And by our being made known, God's presence is with us. The, the, The big difference between people who are known And people are not known. Scripture is full. Those who cry out to the Lord, He is near them to meet them, to save them, to be with them, to gather them up, to heal them. And Jesus is called Emmanuel, God with us, not God rescue us from it. So God is with us in the midst of the first three chapters and the last two chapters, and He ain't leaving. But the way that we struggle with living is through these eight tools God has given us to be able to live fully in a place that is tragic. Every single one of these eight feelings is actually good. And if you can't do them, if you can't do feelings, it means that you are practicing, instead of drinking in the water, you become a person who practices hopelessness. You're defended against letting somebody know that you're in in pain. 
and I'm gonna I'm gonna walk up I'm gonna walk I'm gonna walk up to you or one of you guys in just a minute. Okay, so I'm gonna come off off camera for just a sec. So when I do this, I take your may I touch you? Sure. Yeah, take your skin and I, I I grab some I twist it. Okay, you look like that's not happening. Okay, <laughs> take, take your skin and I twist it. You look like that's not happening. Okay, so you look like you don't feel it. Correct. Okay. But did you feel it? Absolutely. Okay. And what kept you from saying, I feel that? <laughs> both of you. Both of you, you, you manned up. So both of you are practicing being ashamed of your internal makeup. Because if you cry out, you'll be labeled as a wimp. And if, if you let me know I got to you, then you will be seen as possibly, oh, well, I thought he was going to be a real leader. Turns out he's a baby or he's weak, right? So I want you to hear that we grow up contemptuous towards the very things that help us. Okay, now, let's see. I don't want to bruise you, so do not, but listen. <laughs> listen, I'm going to come back out. Will you, will you please not let me harm you in your machoism, please? Okay. You need to come back in the morning. It's like, like somebody give you a shot. No, dude twisted me up. So when I do this, be alive. Ouch. Ouch. Yeah. And, and, and ouch gives you opportunity for it to stop. Yeah. To be loved, to be cared about, and to be seen as human, which is a bad thing. If you're self-sufficient, if you're ashamed of how you're made. I want you to know that we literally live in a world that says you should not feel. And if you do, you mark yourself as worthless, inadequate, incompetent, sickening, disgusting, unlovable, rejectable, not ready for the big time, 